Tracy James here, finally back for another video. I've had so many projects going on. And today I want to talk about sandstone to quartzite. So this is a piece of Entrada sandstone here. And it's about a three and a half on the Mohs scale. This is what all the red formations you see in Utah are made of. And I've got a piece of copper here. I've already scratched the end there, but I'll show you that you can easily scratch sandstone with a piece of copper. And that makes it about a three and a half on the Mohs scale. Now, when this metamorphosizes under temperature and pressure, it becomes super hard. It becomes what we call quartzite. Here's a big piece of quartzite that I found on Crazy Lace Hill. Now, when I was started rock counting, I kind of get in my head that if I was in an area with metamorphic rock or if I was in an area with igneous rock or an area with sedimentary rock, that would be all I find. But then you, you forget you have things like uplift and floods that, that uncover things and weathering that uncover things and water that bring other things into the area. So even though everything up there is pretty much igneous, this is a metamorphic rock that started out as sedimentary. Now this stuff is so hard, it's like a seven and a half on the Mohs scale. And I can't scratch this with a file. I mean, it does nothing to it. So what I like about quartzite is that it tumbles beautifully. Now, if you saw my video on tumbling obsidian, uh, you know that I'm not a big fan of tumbling because I don't like the fractures and the chips and the nicks that go on from a, into a rock after all the time you spend on it. So uh, let me show you some tumbled pieces of quartzite here. I mean, look at this piece. It's beautiful. It's perfect. I got another one here. And I got a third one. Now, if you read the definition of quartzite, it'll tell you it's non-foliated. And you may take that to mean that it doesn't have banding in it. Well, banding and foliation, I think, are two different things. This is a metamorphic rock also. This is mica schist. And it's full of what people might think is gold, all the little mica particles in it. And this isn't near as strong or as hard as the quartzite itself is. And it tends to fracture along those foliations. When I flip this over, you can see how this rock will just come right apart if I put any kind of pressure on it right there. And so you'll see culverts of this up in the Dixie Forest uh, where this is just broken down into nothing but mica and the whole thing just glitters in the culvert. It's just full of mica particles from the breakdown of, of the schist. So uh, it's interesting that sandstone being metamorphic, it turns into quartzite is super hard and you have this other metamorphic rock that's just, just not quite as hard. Now, I also told you in that last video when I was in Panguitch, I ran into a geologist and I asked him, do you ever get fossils in quartzite? And he said, no. And so I, the reason I picked this rock up was this. Now, that looks like fern, but it's not. It's manganese oxide dendrites. So this forms inside of the agates you see in Montana even that form those dendrites. This I've also found this on agates that came from the uh, Orcart mine claim uh, out by uh, Lake Mead also. But this was such a spectacular example and it just looks, you would think that this was fern or algae growing in, in an aquatic area. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. So don't let this fool you. If you've got a super hard rock, another way to distinguish quartzite, if you look at the edge of it where it's broken, it kind of has a, the, 
the grain of it is very fine and it kind of looks very sugary. It has a very sugary look to it. It, it doesn't break conchoidally like, like jasper or obsidian. It's, it's just kind of a fine sugar grain look to it. I have one more piece I want to show you here because when I found it, I think it's petrified wood. And I still think it's petrified wood. And I think it's oak petrified. It looks like a piece of red oak wood to me. This may, however, be a piece of quartzite, but I've looked at it under 30 times magnification, and I'm still convinced that this is that this is petrified wood that is agatized, and uh, I think it's spectacular color, and it looks so much like red oak that it, that it amazes me, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is, petrified red oak. So there is another rock. Uh, let me grab it and then I'll come right back. Okay, this is a piece of gneiss. Now this is the next step after the mica schist. It's under more pressure and higher temperatures and it forms, it moves from schist to gneiss. Now this is a much harder rock. It doesn't break along those foliation planes like the mica schist does. Um, let's see, I've got the piece of copper here. Nothing. It, it, does, it doesn't do anything to it. Let me get my file here. Let's see if we can scratch it with the file. That looks like it left a little bit of a scratch with the file. So it's six and a half or seven, where, where the quartzite is even harder than this stuff. It's, it's pretty amazing. But you notice it's a little coarser grain. It doesn't have the reflections of the mica schist. And it, it looks more tectonically tortured. It bends and it curves and it <clears throat> has some interesting patterns to it. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd share this because I, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, you, you, you start to get in pigeonhole things. You think the area you're hounding is only gonna have one kind of rock, but it doesn't. And I just thought I'd share with you the differences. And so sometime if you find something you might think is a fern or a fossil, you have a better way of identifying it. And I hope you uh, learned something from this video and enjoyed yourself. Uh, I hope you like and subscribe. Uh, my subscriber number's gone up quite a bit, but I got a long ways to go. And I hope you all have a great week.